Hey, Sam. I'm sick. <laughs> hey, Morgan. I'm not, but I'm very tired. So this is going to be a, an interesting podcast, to say the yes. least. Yes. <laughs> It is definitely going to be interesting. I'm also very tired. Like the minute we end this episode, I'm probably going to crawl back into bed and take a long nap, maybe even sleep for the rest of the night. We will see. But so how was your how was your week, Sam? It was good. I ate way too much candy at work because we everyone and their brother gave us candy. And so now I have like a perpetual stomach ache. Oh, <laughs> too much candy. It was just like there and you know how when like a bucket of candy is just there you just are like oh well one more and the next thing you know you've eaten like 15 fun size snickers and twix bars and you didn't realize it and then your your tummy hurts later and it's not fun i think i had like a little bit of candy i don't really think i ate a lot of candy like i'm not really a candy type of gal as i say this one of my co-workers she went to boston and she brought back us like glasses from one of the breweries breweries i'm saying that wrong i'm sorry breweries there and she gave us like um glasses that were they're so beautiful i'll just send you a picture sam they're so pretty she shuck them full of candy and i just been eating those all day so i meanwhile i'm like oh i don't eat a lot of candy i've been eating like reesey cups like there's no it, like no tomorrow but yeah no halloween wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. I tried taking like some videos with my dog. I posted one on TikTok if you want to check that out. You know, it was cold and rainy where I'm from. And then like no one trick-or-treated. Like I like last year we got so many kids. This year I think we got like seven. Well, I saw like on Facebook people were like rage posting about trunk or treat and how it's taking the trick-or-treaters away. Okay, what is trunk, trunk or treat? I have no clue what that is. So they pick a parking lot that people are going to meet. And it's generally a church parking lot. And people dress up the trunk of their car and like leave it open and then like kids go to each car and they pass out candy that way. So instead of going up to like people's houses, they go up to the car in this like specified area. Listen, I understand why people may do that because it may be safer, but I walked my ass off when I was a kid to collect my candy. I worked for it, Sam. We got oh, I know. frostbite because it like in Vermont, it's already snowing in October. Like we got frostbite. We had to work our asses off to get that candy. I walked miles in the snow to get my candy. Pretty much. No, when I have children, my children are going to be walking in the snow. There's not going to be any snow. I'm going to probably get some ice and throw it on the ground and be like, get a walk through that. Feel what I feel right we went through the trenches so now you do too you have to feel what we feel also if i do sound really stuffed up it's because i'm sick so please just ignore it my voice will probably go in and out but we are going to be talking about this super super fun book and it's going to be a fun episode the book that we're going to be actually talking about today is called luminaries by Susan Dunnar, Dunnard. And now this is the writer who wrote Something Strange in Delhi series and the Witchland series. The Luminaries is a fancy young adult novel that takes place in Hemlock Falls. This town is cut off from the rest of the world and is full of monsters in the woods because why not? The book follows Winnie Wednesday, whose whole family has been exiled because of her father. But Winnie is determined to change that. So on the month of her 16th birthday, she can take the Deadly Luminary, aka Monster Trials, to prove that her family is loyal. But to do that, she needs help from her ex-best friend, Jay Friday, who is the most promising new hunter in Hemlock Falls. But when Winnie discovers something dangerous lurking, a nightmare that is like the likes of ones that she's never seen before, can anyone really help her before something bad happens? The cover of this book is absolutely gorgeous. Have you seen the paperback version? I haven't seen the paperback version. I have the hardcover version, and I actually sent you a picture of what's like under the dust cover so you can see it and live vicariously through me. I love when books like the under the dust cover has a pretty picture. I think I was just joking around with you. I was like, I love how people will be like, hey, can I have like they ask for like nudes? I'm like, hey, can I see what's under the cover? Show me what's under the dust jacket. Please. <laughs> I want to know if it's pretty or not. And I'm not allowed to buy any more books until I come see you. So thank you for sending me that photo. You're welcome. You're the one who really wanted to read this book. It's fantasy. I was a little bit nervous about reading it because like, I, you know, and I've said this a thousand times. I'm not really a fancy reader. But you know what, Sam? I really like this book. 
Good. I'm glad because I had no idea what it was about. I just heard people say it was good and I thought the cover was pretty. I pulled you. Are you calling me out? I am calling you out, but I'm slightly calling myself out too because when I started this book, I had not read even the summary of what this book was about. So I had no idea what we were about to read. Well, it's like a surprise. That's why I do it. That's why when I go to the bookstores, I just look at a cover and I say, you pretty, you coming home with me. That's it. <laughs> like there's no like me looking the back of stuff or anything like that. So that's why a lot of times when I go read a book, I'm like, wow, this book is fantastic. I didn't even know it was going to be like this. It's like a nice surprise. I love it. You know, I don't know about you, Sam. The book itself starts off really fast. And I was like a little bit confused at first. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into this. I don't know if I'm going to love it. And it just kind of feels like you're reading Winnie's life story for a while you're just kind of in it it took me a while to get into it because of that but i do feel like i really love the whole concept of it like how there's different clans and how there's a force with monsters and of course the romance i you know i generally really liked it i think i read it like a four star book just because there was a certain parts of the book that really i don't know annoyed me and then also i kind of felt like and i guess this is not really is it spoiler but i felt like the book itself was i felt like the writer was like okay we i need to get to point a to point b to point c and i'm just gonna write it there there was nothing really that happened in between and i just kind of felt like at some point it was really dull but like i said before i really liked the concept of it and i really liked the plot line of the book and i think that's what made me love the book and i really did like jay uh, her ex best friend. Yeah, I gave it four stars. I like it when books just kind of throw you into the middle of everything that's going on. And then you just kind of figure it out as you're going. I feel like the world's not so complicated to that it's difficult to understand. And I feel like that Susan did a good job of kind of like putting Winnie in situations that kind of explained what was going on without info dumping everything on top of you, which is I mean, a lot of fantasy books, they just kind of give you these long paragraphs versus like when she was talking about the compendium, like you didn't have to like, she didn't give you this long list of what it was. She just kind of explained like, this is this book of monsters. And I like to draw out of it because I'm not allowed to like read the original one. I have these like photocopies of it and everything. And so you're kind of understanding what the compendium is, what her family's outcast status and everything that's kind of going on around you without having these like long paragraphs of her just being like, and this is the world we live in and blah, 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 blah. And it just goes on and on forever. And you're just kind of bored out of your mind from it. I like the clans, but at the same time, my brain was like, is there some incest going on around here? Because everybody has the same last name. Yeah, I kind of thought about that too. I was like, ah, this is a little sketchy. Also, I was like, huh, Winnie Wednesday, that kind of rhymes. And I realized it was like clan name and I was like, okay, never mind. And also, please excuse me if I've forgotten some things about this book because I, I haven't been feeling good this week. So I tried to focus really hard on this book, but I probably have missed a couple things so i do apologize i kind of feel like i'm not i'm gonna ring this up divergent i haven't read the books i've only seen the movie once is it i feel like it's kind of like you choose your own clan or maybe i don't know the way i kind of understood it was like if like if i was a wednesday and i married a thursday then i'd become a part of the thursday clan but if like i got divorced i would go back to the wednesday clan but the clans follow the mother so the kids would follow the mother into that clan Oh, oh yeah, I do, I do remember that, okay. So, like, the clan thing was kind of funky, and then it was like, oh, they're from the, like, Argentinian clan, and their last name was Hueves, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's fun. Like, they continue, they just use different last names, and I guess there was one that was Korean, someone from a Korean clan, and I couldn't really catch what their last name was, but I'm like, well, that's super interesting. Like, they, they keep the pattern, but, like, they adjust it to their culture. And then I also thought it was super interesting, too, that, like, depending on how old the spirit was, was what monsters there were were so if you, it was like pokemon like whichever region you were in were what kind of spirits you were gonna get and i was like that's really interesting you gotta catch them all <laughs> yes there's room for expansion if they decide to move around a little bit even though we kind of like lived in their little world that they kind of built in this book so it was i liked it i had a good time with it yeah i don't know if you have anything else that is non-spoiler that you want to talk about or if you want to jump into the spoiler section let's jump into the spoiler section okay so this is our spoiler section so if you haven't read the book and you want to and you don't want to be spoiled, please go check out our other episodes. 
last week released in the Halloween episode in which we told spooky stories. We also released an episode about things we like in books. So there are other episodes to go check out if you don't want to be spoiled. But anyways, the thing I want to talk about first, Sam, and this is something I actually didn't remember until I was going through the book again to kind of like write up my notes, is that in the beginning we get a chapter called The Nightmare. And I want to read off like the, it's only two paragraphs, so I'm going to read off the chapter and um, I feel like I, I feel like we need to discuss it. So it says, The forest comes for the boy on his 13th birthday. He's not the first to catch the forest's notice. He will, however, be the last. Others have received bits of woven twine from a banshee or a shiny snail from a mu- musclin. But he finds a wolf jaw on his pillow when he opens his eyes at dawn. He was having the nightmare again. The one where his, fa- his father has a face and his mother is still alive. It always begun- begins a happy dream until a shadow arrives. First they claim his father, then they claim him too, while his mother weeps and screams and begs for the forest to change its mind. But the forest never changes its mind. Not in the dream and not in real life either. Which is why when the forest calls for the boy, he enters. And when the forest is done with him, he leaves. No longer a boy, no longer entirely a human, but a rather a ticking time bomb, waiting for the forest to one day spark his views. What do you think that all means? Okay, so I had a theory on the werewolf, and then you rereading that makes me like change my theory a little oh, bit. Oh, Really? So, my original theory of who the werewolf was has been Jay this whole time. Oh, did you? Now, who do you think it is? So, I'm thinking Darian is the werewolf. Her brother? Her brother. Because he's older. And all of this happened 17 years prior. And I don't, I mean, I, I really, didn't, I couldn't really gauge how old Darian is. You could easily be bitten and change. Yeah. And her father has been, according to this book, framed, and the mom is still around. So, because the whole through the whole book, the werewolf is essentially protecting Winnie. Well, no, I thought it was more so the whisper. The werewolf knocked her down in in the second trial, third trial. It knocked her down, and she said it knocked her down like Jay knocked her down. Then it got up and ran away. But then I'm like wondering, like, was it the locket that like pushed the werewolf away? And who the heck's the whisper? And I'm just like, well, she did use the locket against the werewolf. Well, who gave her back the locket afterwards? Aunt Rachel? Maybe it's Aunt Rachel. Darian gave her the locket for her birthday. And then Aunt Rachel gave the locket back to her, telling her that it was her grandmother's on her dad's side. But also, how can he easily find a locket in the woods? Well, no, because he found it in, like, the, uh, his mom mom and dad's old stuff. No, no, I meant for aunt, um, the aunt. Because you know how the aunt finds it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess th- there was cameras in the woods. Who knows? Aunt Rachel's a little sketchy, too, so. She is a little bit sketchy. So what's your what's your new theory now, though, that I read off that chapter? So my, my new theory is it's probably Darian's the werewolf. Oh. So I, unless Jay's the werewolf and, like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Because cause Jay has moments where he kind of, like, changed. But not, like, physically changed. But, like, he kind of, like, zones out and stuff. And then he's constantly making himself high or, like, missing school and everything. So I'm like, is Jay still the werewolf? But Jay's the same age as Winnie. Yeah, but I also don't Both his parents are dead. That is true. His parents are dead. But I actually do have a couple of theories that may not involve the werewolf. Okay. I feel like the creatures in the forest, the, they just how they just appear. I feel like they're they're other human beings just Ooh, changed. I I don't know why. I just get that feeling like maybe like they're from a different village or maybe they're dreamt about something else. And then the whole concept of the whisper doesn't make sense to me. And I also feel like the Dianas, which is the rivals to the Luminaries, all we know about them is that they're evil supposedly evil i have a feeling do you know like sometimes like you read a story and you're like oh these are the good people i have a feeling that the dianas are the good people and the luminaries are not that great of a people yeah because because like aunt rachel knew exactly what was going on with winnie the whole time and the fact that winnie wasn't like actually passing the trials she was just like skating by but she was like it's fine because you proved loyalty like loyalty through and through is like for every single clan, whether even though not all of them like their mottos aren't loyalty, what was it? Culture is uh, deeper than blood, or something like that, or thicker than roots, or whatever. Like 
like culture runs deep. So that kind of sounds culty to me. Um, it could easily be a cult. And also, like, you know when she falls off the waterfall and she can hear, was it Jay's sister? Mm-hmm. Singing. Yeah, so she died and he, she, she could hear her singing. Maybe Jay's sister's the whisper. Maybe. I don't know. I have a feeling that something's happening. Like, the monsters are more than what they are. Either they're, like, being transformed from humans or they're just people who've died. Yeah. And who are souls are stuck there and they're turned into monsters. So, I also feel like another huge part of this is Winnie and her mental health. So, you know, Winnie is exiled. They've been exiled for, like, 10 years, right? And it was only four years, I think. Yeah. But the fact that so many people, like, turned their backs on her would, like, and then all of a sudden when she, like, killed, quote, unquote, killed that banshee and everyone turned back around, I feel like that would really mess with her mind a lot. I think that you can kind of tell throughout the whole series that Winnie really does suffer some panic attacks and feeling super overwhelmed, like her breakdowns. I don't know. I felt really bad. And also, like, I got really frustrated, too, with the people who all of a sudden switched and were, like, being super friendly with her all of a sudden. It was stupid. And I'm glad that, like, they kind of brought it up multiple different times through the book of, like, you exiled us for the last four years and now all of a sudden I'm of use to you and now you want to be my friend? Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, Sam. If I was exiled, I hope you would still secretly be my friend. <laughs> I'll always be your friend, bestie. Oh, Be like um, Emma and uh, Bretta. Yeah. How they're like, we don't care that you're exiled. You're still, our, you're still our cousin. We're still gonna be friends with you. I loved Emma and Bretta. They were just like, raise the sunshine. The fact that they like, go into the woods and kill things and they're like the nicest people in the entire world. I was just like, I can't see it. Yeah, they're so sweet. I also, okay, can we talk about, I know, like, um, towards the end of the book, did you think that Emma was Emma when she went into the woods trying to lure Winnie out? No, but Winnie kind of set it up for us to not believe that it was Emma right away, because she said that, like, changelings will, like, look like humans, but they're not 100% human, and she kind of goes through her whole little spiel and stuff. But I think it was kind of stupid that, like, in order to prove loyalty, Emma had to lure Winnie into the woods and then Winnie had to save her and then Emma ended up getting her and it was like why are we using the children because they have to like I don't know survivor survivor of the fittest yeah and why Emma and not Bretta like on their birthday I don't know also can you imagine that on your birthday they're like hey you have to go into this crazy forest with these monsters it's just not the children well like and also on top of that though I like the fact that like she's obviously asking for help and they're not and so she's like oh i'm just gonna run to this camera and of course she gets attacked and i feel like she got attacked by every single monster there was <laughs> not even at that point but like the second trial when they had to spend the night in the woods and then she ended up pulling her alarm and her aunt the other hunters magically showed up just as like dawn was showing up i don't know i feel like they should have shown up sooner because they were supposed to be hunters in the woods anyway why did it take them so long to get to her because they were waiting for dawn maybe her I, like, I agree, Sam. I think her aunt is shady. Do you think the aunt framed the dad? Yeah, of course. I think the aunt definitely framed her dad. I think the aunt knows more than she's putting off. I don't know. I just get weird vibes from the aunt completely. I'm just curious about the why. Like, why would someone frame her dad as a Diana if he wasn't? Or I don't know if he actually is or isn't. But, like, why would she frame the dad? Is it because she's mad that her sister, who was, like, the lead hunter, decided to marry this guy and have a kid instead of, like, continuing to be the lead hunter? Because, like, Aunt Rachel is now the lead hunter. Well, is she upset that her sister chose someone from the outside world? Yeah. Because her dad is from the outside world. And then, here's the thing, too. So, the dad had to be vetted through the Wednesdays in order to marry her mom. But then, they turn around and go, well... A good luminary would have recognized a Diana right away, except that she was married to him and had kids and went through the vetting process and they all knew him. Why were they getting blamed for the dad being a Diana? Because they needed to put the blame somewhere. And not the rest of the freaking clan when the clan vetted him. Yeah, of course not. Look at clan when um she goes to them. Like, she goes to the head person. Yeah. She goes to tell them about the whisper. Tells them, like, hey, this is, like, a new nightmare that's absolutely terrifying. And they don't want to listen to her about it. They're, like, in full denial about the whole whisper concept. Potentially, it could really kill a lot of people because like no weapon can really hit it it's just frustrating and also like that's another thing about like the plot line that really frustrated me was the fact that i want to know more about her father and i get it, it kind of maybe will lead into the next book because i think is this a duology or a tr trilogy sam do you know um it looks like it's gonna be a duology for right now 
so we'll know more I guess in the next book but I was just really frustrated because I want to know more about her father and also I really hope that her mom and her brother nothing changes my views of them because I absolutely love her mom and her brother yeah they're awesome like I I loved them I love the brother. He's funny. Oh, yeah. The brother's hilarious. And also, like, the fact, like, when she did her first task and she got, uh, she saw the Banshee and the brother's boyfriend was, like, telling him all about how Banshees really are. And the brother's like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm just glad she's alive. So, I don't know about you, but I also really love the fact that uh, Winnie, even though she has studied these, these monsters, read about them, draw them, even tried practicing in her house, like, how to roll safely, she's very inexperienced and you can definitely see that throughout the book and I like the fact that it's not just like I pick up the bow and I know how to use it right away and I'm amazing like Winnie is a little bit of a mess up if you look at it like she's a mess she's a hot mess for the first task the banshee she like didn't even kill it she she almost died the second task she gets attacked by a horde of vampires once again almost dies and then the whisperer comes and saves her once again and then third task she almost kills Emma, who gets attacked by a werewolf? Yeah, I I think so. I don't know. All I know is she had, like, a broken leg or something. And then she gets attacked by, I think, a Kelpie? And then she is, like, a whisper's coming. And so she's, like, instead of facing the whisper, she's, like, I'm just going to yeet myself off the <laughs> off this waterfall. <laughs> I'm going to take this banshee talon or whatever, and I'm going to basically make you pass out. So if you're, you end up being Kelpie meat, like, good luck. And then I'm going to go, like, jump off this waterfall. Yep, pretty much. No, good luck, sis. The whisper. You no, know, same. I really think the whisper is helping her. I think the whisper is her dad. You think so? I think so. I think the whisper is controlled by the Dianas. But then again, do you think that her dad is actually working with the Dianas? Because obviously not. If he was framed, right? I don't know, because the locket belonged to her dad's mom her grandma and it was the diana symbol so maybe her dad is a diana i don't know and then they said that like the diana's like place they're like hoodoo voodoo in in the woods in the ground or whatever so maybe like her dad is a diana and he set stuff up in the woods and now like they're protecting her or she's half diana and so maybe she's calling amongst a spirit that like is just in the woods and she's controlling it even though she doesn't know how oh yeah that didn't make sense also i kind of use the dianas as hippies yeah i do too i don't know i hope in the second book we get more information about the dianas and like how they work although i do want to talk about jay and her relationship what do you think about it honestly i really could care less about their relationship no really yeah honestly i really could i was more focused on other things i really could have cared less about their relationship i kind of felt like there is no chemistry. No, that's all. I really could care less about their relationship. Like, I get it. Like, we want them together. We ship it. We get it. But, like, I just felt like there was no chemistry at all. Like, he is grumpy. She is misunderstood. I don't know. Maybe the second book, the relationship be more vetted out. But, like, I don't know. In the end of the book, I expected for him to run for her and like go save her and i guess like but i guess i'm like you don't really need a man to be your knight in shining armor but my romance side of me does need that yeah i really honestly could have cared less about their relationship i I had no there was no stakes i know that they were best friends previously but then they kind of just like weren't friends for like four years and then she needed a tutor and like that was kind of nice I felt like their relationship was more platonic than it was romantic. I agree with that completely. I felt like it was really being pushed. And also her other friend, I forgot her other friend's name. Erica? Yes, Erica. I wish there was more scenes of her too. But I don't know. It's like the, like I said before, like I felt like the writer had to get to point A to point B. Some, some of the novels just didn't flow right. Like I said before, I love the concept of the novel. Love the storyline of it. I literally could not wait to read book number two. And I'm pretty sure we probably will do an episode talking about it anyways. One of the things I want to ask you, Sam, and I wrote down every clan's motto. And I want to ask you, after I read it, I'm going to ask you what clan you think you'd be involved in if okay. you had to choose a family clan. There's Monday, which is a white scroll with a black ribbon. That's their logo. And intellect at the four knowledge at the path tuesday which is a red scorpion strength a body and heart we hold the line wednesday is their logo is a black bear and their motto is the cause above all else loyalty through and throughout thursday is a silver bell for their image and theirs is always prepared never without a plan 
Friday is a gray sparrow, and theirs is integrity in all honesty at the end. Saturday is a key, and theirs is leadership is deed in word. Persuasion is power. And Sunday is a swan, and theirs is patience inside, calm under pressure. I don't know. Between Monday and Thursday. I was going to say, I feel like you're a Monday. I feel like I'm a Monday, too. They kind of sound like Ravenclaws. Oh, wait, but you're always really good at planning. So I think I'm a Monday with, like, Thursday attributes. Yeah. For me, I'm definitely not, like, listen, I'm not about, I mean, like, I love reading, but, like, books, like, learning, no, I'm not Monday at all. I feel like you're more like a Saturday. A Saturday? I think I either wear a Saturday or a Wednesday because I am a really loyal person. Mm. But, yeah, so anything else you want to add about this book? Uh, no, I just can't wait for the second book because there, I mean, what I really liked about this was even though we got a full story, we still have a lot of questions and like, I'm excited to find out what happens next. So Susan, write the book and give us a title and a release date because listen, we've been waiting on Dark Rise for a while and I don't want it to be like that. Listen, Dark Rise doesn't mean have a title on Goodreads. It doesn't mean a release. Listen, CS Pact, get on it, please. Because I need to know what's going to happen. Because by the time you release the book, I'm going to be dead. Or I'm going to forget the whole book. But anyways, the next book we're going to be reading is is called Q by Amy uh, Tira. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Tentra. So this is a dystopian novel, which is, I don't think we've read one of those it's been a long time since i read a dystopian well i think the last one we talked about on the podcast was what the grace year yeah okay so that was like beginning of last year or this year obviously this year yeah it was like february yeah wow no it's been a while but this takes place in a post-pandemic world i wonder if it's based in reality but (laughs) basically in this world austin texas is basically in quarantine and there's giant walls that covers the city and it follows Maisie, who is a trusted lieutenant who's in charge of like taking care of families and controlling the families. And when the president's son, Leno, Lenor, no, Lenin, Lenin, L E N N O N, Lenin, mm-hmm. is kidnapped and placed in the middle of the queue, which is, I guess, where people who are sick are. And he's given a temporary antidote, is up to Maisie to save him before he is permanently permanently infected and has to stay there for the rest of his life or die so it's gonna be a really interesting book it's like a little sci-fi a little dystopian i it looks interesting the cover looks beautiful so i'm excited i'm excited too i went through my dystopian phase but it's not really in either one of our genres so it'll be fun but thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you like, you can always rate us on Spotify or follow us on Spotify and Apple. And Sam, the socials? Oh, gosh. So if you think we're absolutely hilarious and fun fact, we absolutely are. Uh, we do have a TikTok. It is just one more page podcast. And for all the photos and fun and everything else, uh, we do have an Instagram and it's just one more page official. Um, so go ahead and come follow us on all of our socials. It's the best way to kind of interact with us, talk with us. We love interacting with you guys. So yeah, go ahead and give us a follow and we appreciate you guys listening to us. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.